Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Serpents have caused great problems for mankind. It was so in the beginning, is now, but shall not be forever. It won't be forever because the promise, the promise first given, in Genesis 3.15, has been given to us. The Christ shall bruise the serpent's head, and the serpent shall bruise the Christ's heel. The fiery serpents near Mount Hor struck the heel of the Israelites, bringing death with their mouths, just as the serpent who had spoken that death-causing lie to Eve. But in the garden, and here in the wilderness, there was no one to crush the serpent's head. You heard that the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And make no mistake, the events near Mount Hor were divine punishment for the unbelief of God's people. And even though the Lord had brought the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, had provided for their welfare during this whole journey, the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. After nearly 40 years of God providing for their needs, they again complained about the situation they were in. They were weary of the travel. They detested the food that God gave them each and every day. They had rejected God's providence and his acts of deliverance. Now, For people such as these, there is nothing but death. The source of life has been rejected, and human wisdom has been substituted for divine will. And so it was that righteous God sent forth the serpents to call them to repentance. And when the Israelites realized that, they recognized their guilt. We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you, Moses. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. The Israelites' despair had turned them back back to God in penitence, back to the one who was their deliverer and their provider. You see, it was not the Lord's will that he would kill all the Israelites in the wilderness. He had made a promise, a covenant, one that he would keep, for he is faithful, even as his people are faithless. The Lord God hears what his people say in repentance and he provides to them a remedy for what afflicts them. In the wilderness, the Lord God does not provide something to crush the serpents that were striking the Israelites, but he does give them a remedy that removes the serpent's venom. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. Life is given in the midst of human death. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. The solution was given for the problem the Israelites faced. Believing in the Lord God's promise, they could look at the statue and live. Once again, the Israelites were restored. They heard what the Lord God said and saw what the Lord God did. And this time, they did not grumble or complain. They did not speak out against Moses or the Lord, but believed and trusted them. And through faith, they were saved. For as they believed, they looked to the ensign of salvation and received it. 
But what of those who continue to be bitten by serpents, the kind here not of this world? What of those who suffer the poisonous effects of sin and evil, the venom of Satan's lie and their own depravity? To whom do they turn? Where can they look to be saved? The truth is that you suffer like the Israelites in the wilderness. You are struck by sin, by death, and by Satan. Your afflictions may be the result of your own grumbling and complaining, your speaking against the Lord God. Other times it's the result of your unbelief your rejection of the providence of God and his acts of redemption. And still other times, it's simply the random snake bite, the unexplained affliction that happens in this fallen and chaotic world. So to whom do these people turn for aid? What has been set for you to look at? Well, this is what Jesus tells you. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus identifies himself as that ensign of salvation. Those stricken by sin, the victims of Satan's venom, are to look to him who was lifted on a pole. And there they will find forgiveness and redemption. The bronze serpent remedied the problem that the wilderness serpents caused the Israelites. But Jesus says that he is the solution to that universal problem that the serpent brought into the world. That the serpent brought into the world at Eden. You see, Jesus is the promised serpent crusher. He is the one who brings righteousness to those who lack it. The one who brings life to those who are destined for condemnation and for death. Jesus acts like the statue in the wilderness. But what he brings to effect is of much greater benefit. It is not simply a temporary aid that he provides. His is the eternal medicine. The Gospel of John records this eternal benefit that Jesus brings. Many of you know these words so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Indeed, there is ample reason for the Lord God to condemn the world, just as there was ample reason for God to kill the Israelites in the wilderness. But in mercy, in mercy, the Lord God acts in a much different way. He brings salvation to the dying, salvation to this poisoned cosmos. Life now comes to you poisoned people, an eternal antidote produced from the fruit of the tree of the cross. For as the merits of Christ's death and resurrection are dispensed to you through holy baptism, through holy absolution, through the holy word, and through the holy supper, so also the venom of sin is counteracted, and you are revived. You are no longer destined for death. You no longer have reason to complain or speak out against the Lord God. He has delivered life to you and has set you on the path to paradise. There was ample reason for your condemnation, but the Lord God waived it. He waived it since his son has removed your guilt, has crushed your accuser, and has given you newness of life. His will for you has been carried out. That ancient serpent, the one who leads people to eternal death, has been crushed. And you have been provided with salvation as you look to him who was lifted up to give you life. 
as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. It had to be that way. It had to be that way so that you who were poisoned by sin may live. And so what has been promised for us men and for our salvation has been done by Jesus. The snake bite of sin is overcome. It is finished. He has borne your guilt. Your guilt is no longer your problem. Look to the cross. Look to Christ and believe that He is the Son of God. The one who has reconciled the world to the Father. In Him we live. And so also in Him we rejoice. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.